morning, everybody is back from lunch. Is everyone ready to go to sleep? No. 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 I think probably what we need is something like an extreme makeover, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Extreme. Did Gosh. I hear extreme makeover? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, was it uh, what? Ever, ever. Here we go. <laughs> we played a little game just to try to help wake us up at night. You know, when we do the meetings, the monthly meetings, uh, it's six o'clock. It's you know, you've had your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're tired. You want to go to sleep. It's TV kind of ozone. So we just put out a little bit of money and kind of wake people up. If you hear me say, "Yeah, sound like an extreme makeover." Like, what whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Who said that? So that's how the game is played, and that kind of helps wake us up. Okay? So we have uh, Mark Sanders. We've got uh, American Home Program, helping solve America's housing and lending crisis while maximizing investment dollars, is what Mark Sanders endeavors to accomplish as founder and CEO of American Home Program, Incorporated. Mark Sanders brings more than 20 years of expertise in creating millionaires by launching well-known national companies, completing one in Florida's first condo conversion, and has orchestrated the sale and acquisition of more than 7,000 properties. Wow, how do you do that? During the last 24 months, Ooh, that's amazing. Um, his specialty is quick, transforming non-performing assets into significant income streams with multiple defined exit strategies. So let's give it a hand to Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, um, everyone here in Santa Barbara. I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. Excuse me. Get out of the way. Um, we came all the way from uh, Tampa, Florida. i uh, never been to Santa Barbara before. I've been to California several times, but you guys are some of the nicest people in the world. I was talking to Gina last night and I said, you know, were the people there buy or not? Have you ever noticed they give you the nicest no? <laughs> Thank you so much, but not today. Not today. <laughs> you know, we, we came out here and I've heard four or five times um, this morning, we flew in yesterday to come and meet with you, with you nice folks, and I've heard several times um, people going, I, I like Florida, but I don't like the weather. I don't like the heat. Well, I, I'm with you. I'm from the Carolinas originally. You can probably tell by that, that southern draw. One lady said, ma'am. She thought I was from Texas. But I, my wife called me this morning, um, and she's at home with our little one-month-old yesterday daughter. Um, yeah, thank you. Yes. She called me up, and she says, she, says, uh, she says, honey, it's 59 degrees in the house. I said, what do you mean it's 59 degrees in the house? She goes, I went into the nursery this morning. It's 59 degrees in the house. And do you realize it was 59 degrees uh, last night in Tampa? And then they said it's going to be 49 degrees tonight. And so we have a pretty good-sized property. And I said, well, you got a, you got like five air handlers. Pick, pick a floor. Go somewhere. She goes, the baby's nose is cold. But I, uh, so, so for those of you that, that think it's so hot down there, well, it's, not, it's nicer here today than it is in, in Tampa. Um, Nonetheless, thank you very much for having me here. And I, I want to throw a hypothetical question out to everybody. What if I gave everybody in this room 417 assets in 29 states, gave it to you for free, and I told you to turn them in to just do with them what you want to do with them in 29 states? 417 properties in 29 states. Now, mind you, one of them is not California. <laughs> All right, 417 homes today, what would you do with them? Oh, they're not occupied, or if they are, they're occupied with squatters. They're not habitable, they don't meet FHA guidelines. So what would you do with them? You would create a system, you would either say, oh no, I don't want anything to do with it, or you would take it as an opportunity, as a challenge, to build a platform, to build a business that helps restore property values, helps put families into homes as owners, and maximizes your investments. That's what you would do with them. If you're like me, or if you're uh, an entrepreneur, or opportunistic, whatever uh, adverb you would like to call it. Well, I can share with you that 7,000 doors later, we have America's Home Program. We have America's Home Program that we have 
formed into a system that is a duplicatable process that can be done in ABC USA. We have a great saying, it's the program and the profits, it's not the location in the nation. And I'd love to say that. We have another great slogan. You're going to hear me say a couple of slogans today. It's one property, it's one price, it's one HMA. You're going to remember what an HMA is today. It stands for Home Member Applicant. And it's one exit. And we're going to talk about those four steps today, which literally will allow you to do what Tyrone said earlier. Um, maybe not on those kind of scales, um, however, but create or generate residual income with truly doing nothing except for utilizing your funds to and using real estate as your vehicle to invest. I'll tell you briefly, um, just very briefly, a bio of some of the, the core of my company. I come from a background of building pretty well-known companies and building them into duplicatable commodities such as what we're doing here with this one. We've got um, our general counsel, uh, Sean Donnelly, he comes from 23 years as a senior partner of a big firm in, in Florida. We actually acquired him from the firm. He sold out his state. He's on board. 95% of everything he's ever done is real estate trust, real estate investment trust. We picked him for a reason. Paul Jensen, um, he's a tax attorney, CPA, financial planner. 25 years in financial planning and tax problems or tax solutions, we'll call it. He's also on board. Steve Oler King, uh, in addition to America's Home Program, I'm a principal in another company called Rent Solutions. If you look at rentsolutions.com, you may, you've probably heard about the president of Rent Solutions' former company or existing company, which he founded in 1988. It's called Apartment Hunters. You may have heard of Apartment Hunters. Well, he founded it in 1988. It's an Inc. 500 company. He ends up liquidating his interest to Berkshire Hathaway. Well, I'm the largest principal in that company. And so Steve's also works with us in America's Home Program. And then last but certainly not least, as a, uh, a very solid foundation, and I call her my right-hand person, uh, it's Miss Gina Debs. Gina Debs, she's, she joined me today um, here from Florida. She's from Sarasota originally. Uh, Miss Debs has 32 years in the development and construction of residential property business background, 32 years. That young lady back there has built over 10,000 single-family homes in Central Florida. So needless to say, we come with a little bit of one. There she is back there. Well, if she runs it, boy, don't mess around with her. If you're the property, if she, she's in charge of property procurement and renovation for us on a national scale. So don't, if you're a renovator or if you work for us, you're one of our out-of-state brokers or contractors, look out. Be careful because she knows what she's doing. And she'll, she'll take it home. Um, so I shared with you a little bit about the bio. I shared with you a little bit about uh, briefly our background experience. I talk about volume. And I talk about uh, thousands of doors that collectively that we've done. And it's the program and the profits. It's not the location in the nation. However, I'm going to throw out two um, additional before I begin. Two other kind of hypothetical questions. If you qualify to rent... Strike that. Cut. Back up. We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you could qualify to buy based off general guidelines as qualifying to rent, would you? If you could buy today off of a rental, a, gen, a general rental application, you know, they, they talk about, um, believe me, we've got 7,000 assets, I know, about property management. I am not a fan. I do not like to get calls. Well, I don't get calls, but we don't like to get calls from uh, refrigerators or air conditionings or, or thefts, or especially air conditionings in Florida, or heaters today in Florida. The, uh, we don't want to get those calls. So America's Home Program was built on a platform not for property management, more so, more, more so for asset management. You know, in our inventory, we've got $10,000 REOs to $10 million mansions. So I can certainly tell you with all of the gamut that is inside there, um, we've seen the problems. We know the problems that, that tenants and renters um, provide us with. We you know what it takes. And this, this program is truly going to show you several, several key things that it's going to do for families, it's going to do for property values, and going to do for your return. I've essentially told you what it is. It's, it's a, it's a hands-free program that we help American families 
achieve the American dream of home ownership. And while doing so, we're going to receive 29 to 45 percent return on our investment. Now that could be every 12 to 15 months that is going to roll. What does this program do? Three key things. It resets and reestablishes property values. It provides a proven solution for what we deem as worthy families a chance for home ownership again. And it's going to maximize our collective investments, or your investments, my investments, while doing those three. Why now? I don't want to hit you with a lot of statistics. Um, Matthew hit some fantastic numbers earlier today that I made a lot of notes. Thank you very much. A lot of fantastic notes um, and numbers throughout the country of the foreclosure debacle that we're all in. We kind of know where we are. Uh, any of us, we're all here today because we know a little bit about real estate and we're watching it. But residential home values at all time lows, existing home sales, at least on a national platform, are 34%. One in eight homes are delinquent. A gentleman asked me this morning, how's the Tampa market? Or this afternoon, how's the Tampa market? I said 54% of the homes are upside down. That's how the Tampa market is. So foreclosure inventory is clearly at an all time high. Now, what happens when the foreclosure inventory is at an all time high? I was speaking. Uh, Wednesday with Deirdre. Deirdre's in charge of Fannie Mae's dispositions. You guys ever heard of Fannie Mae? Sure. All right. Well, I was talking to Fannie Mae. Who Deirdre was in charge of getting rid of four to seven hundred homes every month in a pool. Now it's interesting. They take back all of their assets that go through the foreclosure. Of the judicial state, such as Florida, if you will, which averages eight hundred and seven days for a, to complete a foreclosure, then they listed on the MLS, and in 91 days later, if they haven't sold it, they liquidate it. And she liquidates, it's amazing, on the 20th of every month, a pool from four to 700 properties are coming out of Fannie Mae. Isn't that amazing? That's a lot of inventory. That's a lot of, that's a lot of property. Now, so the banks are, they're forced to reserve more cash deposits. They're not able to make new loans so it's kind of like Reaganomics, trickle-down economics. The credit availability thus shrinks. Now, has anybody in here ever watched Clark Howard? Remember, I know he's more of a Georgia kind of guy, I guess. He's on CNN or HLN. He's not big on the West Coast out here. Um, well, I, 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 73, I was watching him this morning, and he added a statistic to this, in which I didn't bother to type in. But this is a very interesting statistic. In the price points of which we play in, in real estate, which I, I play in for this, this portfolio, this America's Home program, which are, I'll use round numbers, $75,000 to $250,000 retail price, 73% of all applicants are declined that apply for a mortgage. 73%. CNN this morning said, Clark Howard, HL, whichever it is, said this morning, 40% of the United States population if they applied, tried to apply for mortgage, would be declined. 40%. And I'm saying 73% have declined, that have applied. These are people that at least thought they had a shot to get a loan, that want to be homeowners again, or for the first time become homeowners. The reasons are really very basic, which is not subprime anymore. You know, no longer can you do the NINA loans. You guys remember NINA loans? Yeah, anybody in this room and your significant other could walk into Bank of America and say, I want a no income, no asset loan for that million dollar house. If you had a 720 credit score, you'd get 100% loan to value. That was it. It's called NINA. Then you had CISAs, stated income, stated assets, and CIVITs. Well, we are where we are today because of those types of loan underwriting. And now they went completely on the other side of the pendulum, and this is where we are. So, <clears throat> low credit scores are what's causing the families not to be able to get approved. No credit whatsoever. First time home buyers. They don't have any trade loans. Low or no source and seasoning of funds. What that means is the available, the amount of seasoned funds in your savings or your checking account or your stock account that you can go access for your down payment and closing costs. No longer can you go to your neighbor or your sister and say, hey sis, can you loan me $5,000 for my FHA loan to put a down payment. You can't do that anymore. Lack of reported credit lines. 
no longer do alternative trade lines. Does anybody in here know what an alternative trade line is? If you've ever went out and tried to get a mortgage prior to the last three years and didn't have many trade lines, you would go there and they would say, okay, hmm, you've only got one MasterCard. You don't have a car loan. We've got to have three trade lines. And so you've got to have three trade lines. So they would allow you to bring your Verizon cell phone bill. They would allow you to bring in your California power, I don't even know what it is, your electric bill, and show that you're paying. It's in your name and you're paying never late. 